Hey Tekken players, I hope everyone is doing well. So for today's guide I want to talk about how and also why you should consider learning new characters. Just to lay all my cards out on the table and to set up my stall. These are the following characters I've learned to play and I play reasonably regularly in Tekken 7. King, who is my long term main. I then picked up Kazuya to try and learn some more fundamental Tekken skills. I then picked up Paul to see if he actually was as brain dead as people suggested. I then wanted to try an easy mode Mishima, so I picked up Devil Jin. Now having played King and Mishimas, it seemed logical to pick Armor King. And finally, to make this video, plus a few other reasons which I'll get into later, I recently started to learn Negan. I have tried picking up other characters outside of that list, but for various reasons I decided to drop them, which is again something I'll discuss later on in the video. Now before we go any further, I just want to make this 100% clear as to who this video is aimed at. If you're one of those really irritatingly gifted people who just have the type of brain that can adapt and learn things really really quickly, then I'm afraid this video isn't for you. Jokes aside, I think most pro players fall into this category because I think if you have a very agile brain then you can download your opponent and adapt quickly. And it's no coincidence that the best Tekken players can and usually do play a wide variety of characters. People like Ni, nee, Atif Butt, Arson Nash, and dare I say it, even the main man. Anyway, for everyone else who, like me, struggle to learn new things, or at least it doesn't come naturally, this video will go through not only how to learn a new character, or at least the way I learn, but also why it's important. Spoiler alert, for various reasons, it will make you a stronger Tekken player all round. Just before we jump into it, be sure to listen to my number one super fan and... Like, comment and subscribe. So as always I like to go into the why and not just the how, so let's explore why I think it's good to learn more characters. So the TLDR version is that it will make you a better Tekken player, but rather than skip ahead let me explain why I think this is the case for the following reasons. So without wanting to turn this into an amateur psychiatry lesson, but there's some really interesting studies to the side effects of learning a new language. These include general cognitive development such as better memory and better attention span. It can even lead your brain to become physically bigger. Now, I very much doubt anyone's going to commission a full-on scientific study specifically for Tekken players, but I do think if you have to learn new characters within the game, then your brain will at very least get out of the autopilot or the cruise control mode, as you'll have to rethink your approach to the game. This is especially important if you are currently the type of player who really relies on setups and flowcharts to win. It shouldn't come as a shock or surprise that different characters generally have different archetypes as to their playstyle. So for example, Harang and Nina are generally aggressive rushdown characters. Asuka is all about defense. Ling is all about evasion. Steve and Brian are based around counter hits and timing. And Chloe is based around having more teeth than brain cells. Okay, jokes aside, the point is that if you learn a new character, it gives you the chance to learn a new Tekken playstyle to add to your repertoire. So for example, I generally play Paul as defense and a keypad strategy. So I picked up Negan who has more aggressive tools and stance mix ups. So in short, learning a new character and a new playstyle will improve your Tekken skills and fundamentals as a whole as it will expose you to a more variety of playstyles. King is so cheap, you just do chain throws. Kazuya is so cheap, you just spam electrics and 50-50s. Nina is so cheap, you just spam plus and block strings. Chloe is so cheap, you just Cali roll into easy mode combo and delete half the health bar. Okay. If you're so confident with believing that that's the reason you're losing, put your money where your mouth is and try learning that character and see if you're correct, or more importantly, try spamming what you think is OP and see how other players deal with it. This to be honest is what made me want to try Paul, as I just got annoyed at how seemingly broken the Death Fist Demo Man 5050 is, and once I tried using it I soon learned how to counter it by watching other people beat me. I'm paraphrasing Nia a bit here, but he said something on the lines of if you want to beat your opponent, you have to know their character better than they do. Now, I'm not saying you have to be like Nii and literally play every character, but I would certainly suggest trying out those matchups you bump into or struggle the most, because, to be honest, there's no better way of finding out a character's weakness than trying playing them yourself. 
Just a final reason, and I can only speak from personal experience, but I find when I play another character, when I come back to my main, I actually play my main better than I did before. This could be for all the reasons already cited, or it could just be that taking a break will make you better or help you appreciate what makes your own character, you know, so strong. But whatever the reason, I find that after I've dusted off any cobwebs, I usually play my main better when I come back afterwards, after playing a secondary character. So now we know why it can be beneficial to learn characters, let's look at how, or at least how I do it. Now a fair bit of this is going to be YouTube research, but bear with me. So first port of call, I'd watch that Blasted Salami's amazing Tekken 7 characters overview video. This will give you the best synopsis for each character in terms of their archetype, their design, their strengths and weaknesses and how difficult they are to play. Now you can play any character the way you want to, but as I've already mentioned, certain characters do have general archetypes and so if you play to these strengths then you'll understand and progress probably better with the character. Next thing I'd do is watch a relatively short video on the character. I know you might think it's tempting to watch a full on hour where a presenter goes into all the details, but honestly I don't think you need this to get started. In my opinion, the best guides are between Main Man's 8 minute series and guides produced by Dash Fight that usually feature a pro explaining the character. Both of these series are great because they cover everything you need to know but in a very concise way. Now eventually you may want to watch the longer form guides but I would wait until a future date after you've got a good grasp on the character's basics. So after we've got an idea on the theory and basics of the character, let's load up practice mode and go through a few basics. Now first of all I would begin with learning one B and B combo for the character. Honestly, you don't have to make it any more complicated than you need to. If you've watched Dash Fight, then they normally include one, but if all else fails, you can use sample combos here in practice mode. Now, practice this combo until you have it fairly well embedded in your brain. Now, I know people will tell you that high level tech is not about combos, but about a good neutral game, and although pretty accurate, for the rest of us, we're going to probably score the vast majority of our damage from some sort of launch, and therefore knowing a BNB &B is pretty vital when learning a new character. Once we have the combos down, I would next fire up punishment training, and ideally use a dummy with a character you're fairly familiar with. The reason I say this is, we're not labbing how to punish a new opponent, but we're trying to get into muscle memory how we punish with our own new character. So it makes sense to use a dummy where you know the frames already of the move you're punishing. If you have a chance to launch punish a minus 15 move, make sure you use that chance to practice the BNB &B combos. To make this even more simple, I would definitely focus on your character's 10 frame punish, because this is for the vast majority of the cast, but not all, 10 frame punishes are safe on block and usually have really good additional properties such as frames, knockdown or okey. Ok so after you have your punishment moves dialed and at least one BNB &B combo, it's time to move online. God damn! Okay, 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 hear me out on this one. I know this seems like madness, but let me explain. Now, rather than ranked, you may argue it's better to stay offline in say, treasure battle or just player matches if you want to go online. However, I would avoid treasure battle because if you play that, you may as well just stick to practice mode because in treasure battle, the dummy will almost never block and every hit will be a counter hit. So it's not really gonna help you learn that much. When it comes to player matches, I find the matchmaking here is just so inconsistent. You can literally face a first down one match and then a Tekken God Omega the next. Now there's nothing wrong with that variety if you're playing a character you're familiar with, but when learning a new one, I just don't think it's going to be that helpful. So that leaves good old fashioned ranked. So my top tip here is make sure you're hungry because you're going to be eating a lot of humble pie. And if you're like me, you will at first lose a lot. However, without sounding too zen about this, but honestly it's actually incredibly refreshing to go into ranked and feel no pressure to win and if anything expect to lose. The reason why I say this is because your character will probably fall down the ranks, but eventually your character will bottom out to the actual skill level that you can play him or her. This will depend on your core tech and fundamentals and the type of character you have already played, but eventually the matchmaking skills will balance out at your own level with your, that particular character. So without wanting to offend too many people, I'm just being honest, some characters in this game are so easy that they basically play themselves, and so if you move on to a more honest or hard character, don't expect the transition to be easy. Just for some context, and so hopefully you'll feel better, having played King and ranked him up, 
I picked up Kazuya for the first time, who at the time was at warrior rank, and I kid you not, he fell all the way down to silvers, and it was a very, very humbling experience. When I then moved to Paul after falling just one rank while I settled in, he basically started climbing immediately and I actually got him higher than my main for a fair bit. So in summary, I suggest you play rank because after dust is settled, you'll be playing against other characters and players at a similar level to you, and eventually, as you learn your own character, you'll start climbing up the ranks. Final optional step. Once you've started to begin to rank up and you know you want to stick with the character, I would now take a chance to watch longer guides and comrade videos, and in particular, I would always recommend watching a pro who mains that character. Could be that he or she streams or has a YouTube account. But if you watch how they play the character online, then this will really help you get into all the details of how to play the character. And it's something you could just do whenever you want to take a break from playing Tekken, which is something I'd always recommend you do anyway. Final thing to mention, um, if you start learning a character and for whatever reason you're just not getting on, it could be that a particular combo is just too difficult or you just find that you're just not getting on, there's nothing wrong with then dropping them and trying someone else. I know I've certainly done this. Uh, top of my head for example I tried playing Heihachi for a bit but I just couldn't get into the pick up of his combo and I've tried Hoang which I did in order to make a guide and although it was really interesting playing the character I just didn't have enough time and attention to dedicate to it properly so in short if you feel like you want to drop a character then feel free don't have to stick at it if you're not enjoying it. Thanks all for watching I hope this helped you understand how and why it's worth learning new characters. I have another video coming soon which is going to be a scrubs guide to sidestepping and sidewalking, so be sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that one. I'd love to hear back from you regarding how many characters you play, how you learn new characters and whether you're much better than I am when it comes to learning new things, so let me know in the comment section down below. If this video has helped you be sure to drop it a like to help the YouTube witchcraft push it out to more Tekken players. And I'll let my super fans sign off the video. King is the best character, see you next time, bye!